Growing our own food is hugely satisfying, especially if we can save a little time and effort along the way. Well, my green fingered and thumbed friends, you're going to absolutely love this video because I'm delighted to share with you some ingenious ideas that are sure to up your gardening game, including a clever use for these. More on that later. Containers enable us to expand growing areas to spaces such as patios and balconies. But have you noticed how when you water your pots that potting mix can sometimes seep out of the drainage holes, creating a bit of a mess? Well, the simple solution is to pop a coffee filter paper into the bottom of your container. Then you can fill your container as normal with your potting mix. Now the beauty of this is that excess water can still of course drain out, but the potting mix can't, so that'll keep everything squeaky clean. Don't throw out kitchen ingredients that are past their best. Use them in the garden to boost plant growth. Now milk, oh, milk can be used as a natural fertilizer. Just add it to the soil and then just lightly fork it in to incorporate it. Milk is also excellent used against powdery mildew. Now you mix the milk, one part milk to 10 parts water and then spray it all over the leaves and that will really help with any mildew problem. Flour is actually a good source of nitrogen as well as lots of other micronutrients such as calcium, making it a great choice for leafy crops. Now you can just spread this over the soil surface a couple of weeks before planting. Or just add your flour in thin layers to the compost heap. Now don't forget that any uncooked plant-based kitchen scraps can of course be composted and they all contain lots of nutrients. So don't waste them, recycle them back onto your garden. One of the easiest ways to help recent transplants of thirsty plants such as say squash is to bury a pot next to the plant and then water into that. Now that contains the water nicely and then it drains through the drainage holes at the bottom exactly to where it's needed, to the roots. An even more effective alternative is to gouge holes into a bottle like this. Now when you bury it, make sure that the holes are facing the plant and they're on the same side of the roots. And that way they'll be exactly where they're needed and the roots will be able to grow towards the water source. Then you can just filter through the neck of the bottle like that and it'll drain right through. And if you want to keep this extra safe for wildlife around, then just keep the top of the bottle like that and pop it on the top so nothing can fall in. If you don't have much space for composting, then just dump your weeds, trimmings and old crops onto your paths. Now, in the same way that wood chips will rot down over time, so obviously will all of this organic matter. And once it has, you can just use your spade to scrape up the compost and dump it back onto your beds for future crops. This is the ultimate inconvenient and some might even say lazy composting. Watering by hose pipe can take longer than it should, especially when water pressure is low during say periods of peak demand in the summer. That's certainly the case in our area anyhow. So as an alternative, fill up water barrels. If it's run out of rainwater, fill up water barrels with mains water and then dip in your watering cans and water with them instead. Flow rate from a watering can is almost quicker than that from a hose. And if you have two watering cans, it'll speed things up even further. Dipping your cans into a barrel of water takes mere seconds. And once the barrel is empty, you can just leave it to refill with your hose, go off and do other gardening jobs and it'll be filled up by the time you get back. But please do keep a regular eye on it because you don't want to be wasting any of this precious resource. Small seedlings are more vulnerable to pests such as slugs, cutworms and birds than established seedlings. So the solution is simple. Start them off away from the main part of the garden in a protected area in plug trays and pots. Plants are easier to protect in this way and you'll be helping them through the most perilous early stages of their life. When it's time to plant them, you'll have bigger, sturdier plants that are better able to stand up to a pest attack or that are simply of no interest to pests anyway. If you don't have a cold frame, then make your own from a salvaged window pane popped onto a frame made of straw bales. Now straw bales are fab because they offer such good insulation, creating a cozy environment inside, perfect for overwintering plants or bagging yourself an extra early start on the growing season. 
And once the growing season finally gets underway, you can repurpose those bales to create a sheltered kind of windbreak around recent transplants such as squash. And then after that, use them to create raised beds to grow plants in. And if you would like to know more about that, then do check out our video on growing in straw bales, link in the description below. I am always getting in trouble for making a mess in the kitchen, bringing in sort of dirty, unwashed vegetables and letting muck get everywhere. Well, I've decided to reform my dirty ways and go clean by making myself a little uh, vegetable washing station. And all I'm simply doing is attaching this wire mesh here to a frame. Now you can make your own frame using sort of two by two battens of wood and then simply hammer your uh, wire mesh on with U-shaped pins. Now it's a pretty rudimentary structure but you can see what I'm doing here. On goes the dug up produce there and then very easy to wash it. If you're in a water stressed area then you could collect the water and then dump that onto the garden or just wash these vegetables over an actively growing crop. Nice and clean. For the life of me, I can't find the protective sheath that sits over this hedge trimmer here. Now, before you start worrying, because I would, um, there's no battery here, so there's no way this is gonna start up. We're completely safe. Anyway, with young children around, you don't want this kind of loose and free. So I've discovered a very simple way to make a new blade guard, and that's using foam pipe insulation. Now I've cut this to size, and I'm just gonna put one bit on each side of the blade. And then on with the other side. Now to hold this in place, very important if you've got young kids running around, uh, you could use a bungee cord. I've just got my daughter's hair bands and if you're a regular viewer, you know that I'm often nicking her hair bands. They come in incredibly handy for all sorts of things. Right, there we go. Now this method would work very well for any kind of non-folding knife, for example, or pruning saws, anything like that that's around and you want to keep nice and protected. Stay safe, folks. In a previous video, which I will link to below, I showed you that CD cases or old photo albums make excellent seed storage solutions, and they do. But let me show you another technique that I absolutely love. Mm, almost as much as these Tic Tacs. But it's the cases we're interested in here. These make really robust and reusable seed stores. Just add your seed in here, whether it's saved seed or seed left over and then write the date on the front of when you either harvested the seeds or when the seeds were packed, pop the lid on and then store these in a cool, dry place. And if you can, why not pop in one of these little silica gel packets as well? And that helps keep everything nice and dry. And the beauty of these is that they stack beautifully. Nice little solution. We love featuring these kind of gardening hacks and tips. If you've got a tip, then do share it in the comments below and we may even nab it for a future video. I'll catch you next time.